In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create and edit a flat pattern from a folded model, and we'll also take a look at how to go back and create a flat pattern from a rolled part. We're going to start off by working with the file called flatpattern.ipt, and it can be found in your Chapter 10 Exercise folder. First of all, in this model, as you can see, it already has a whole bunch of flanges on there. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to select a face that I want to have be the base, meaning that all of my other flanges in this case are going to go back and bend around that itself. So now that I have that face selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on the flat pattern. And as you can see, my flat pattern has been generated here. Also in the browser, you'll notice I now have an entry here called flat pattern. So these are two separate environments. So I can go back to the model folded by just double clicking on that or to go back to the flat pattern itself, just double click on that. So it's very easy to go back and switch between those environments. Now that I have my flat pattern generated here, I can go back and do some modifications for that. So for example, if I wanted to rotate that, we can go ahead and do that by right clicking on the flat pattern in the browser and select edit flat pattern definition from the menu. Now, at this point, what we can do is you see we have a couple different alignment options. So if I want for the alignment horizontal, I'm just going to go back and select on this angle line. And let's go ahead and apply that. And you see that that angle line is now horizontal. So let's try that again. I'm going to go back in this case, select the vertical. And let's go ahead and select our edge. And you'll notice that I have a flip option here that I'm probably going to want to use by taking that and selecting flip, it's going to reorient the X, click on apply, and it will flip that back on around. So I also have an option here called the base face. If I go ahead and select on that, and then select on the apply button, the flat is going to rotate 180 degrees, as shown here. Also in this model, I have two punches that have been previously placed. And from the punch representation tab, this is where I can go back and determine how do I want those to look in my flat pattern. So you notice I have two options up at the top here. They look very similar, default formed and formed punch feature. And the reason it says default, that is set at the sheet metal styles. So let's just see what they look like. In this case, of course, I am looking at it with the formed. If I change it to the 2D representation, apply that. Zoom back up on that. You'll see this is just my 2D sketch that I had represented for that. And then the next option is 2D sketch with the center mark. And lastly, we can go back and select on center mark only. And hence, that's why we're only seeing the center mark. So let's cancel out of here for a second. And let's go back and take a look at these sheet metal styles. Now from the sheet metal styles, in this case, if I went back and said I want to show the 2D sketch rep with the center mark, save that, done. And again, I'm going to go back and edit my definition. Under the punch representation, you'll now see that the default is the 2D sketch rep with the center mark. Well, working with the sheet metal flat pattern, you may want to find out what are the extents of my flat. We can simply get that by right clicking on the flat pattern in the browser and select extents from the menu and dialog box will pop up here showing you what is the width and the length of the extents of the flat. While working with a flat pattern, you may want to go back and place in some other cuts that you don't necessarily want represented in the folded model, just in the flat. And we can easily do that. I'm going to make the front plane the active sketch here. And a dialog box pops up and it's going to tell me that anything that I do to this flat pattern will not be propagated to the folded part. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And in this case, I'm just going to draw in a circle off that intersection dimension it so we'll make some dramatic change then going to click return use the cut tool to remove that material as you can see a pretty dramatic change that we have made here now if I go back to the folded model by double clicking on it you'll see that change did not propagate forward here 
However, if I go back and make a change here, so let's say I want to add a couple flanges. So I'm just going to select a couple of these edges over here. Spin the part. So you can see that we've definitely went and created some new additions to the model here. So now if I go back to the flat, just by double clicking on it in the browser, you'll see that we have our new entry there. So let's go back and just do the look at, so we're going to look plan at it. So the model associativity, any change that we do there, is going to be directly reflected back into the flat pattern. When working with flat patterns, it's very common that we need to go back and export this to another file format, for example, a DWG or a DXF file. And you can simply do that by right-clicking on the flat pattern in the browser, and then select Save Copy As from the menu. Now from the menu, we have a couple different choices for the file type, so an SAT, a DWG, or a DXF. In this case, I'm going to select DWG, and I'm going to select on Save. Now in the Flat Pattern DWG Export Options dialog box, this is where we can go back and determine exactly what we're going to save out. So on the right hand side here, which AutoCAD version do we need to go back down to? Under the Layers tab, this is where we can specify which object will be placed on each layer name and do we want that layer's visibility on or off. Under the Geometry tab, this is where you can go back and control exactly what's going to be exported. So for example, by default, we have replaced the splines. There's a lot of manufacturing machines that cannot cut a spline. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and replace them with the line segment. And as you can see here, you can go back and determine the tolerance for how many line segments are going to be placed. We can also go back and merge the profiles into polylines. And the last option here is we can move the entire flat pattern into the first quadrant, which in this case then would take everything to the positive quadrant. After everything has been set, you may want to go back and save a configuration. And then if you go back and save that, you can always come back to that configuration under this drop down list and you won't have to walk through the menu again. So just go ahead and click OK. And our DWG file has been created. So if I go ahead and click on Open, and then select on the flat pattern DWG. Remember I'm doing this right inside of Inventor. I now have my flat pattern right inside the DWG file. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this file and I'm going to switch to a window here called Rolled. So this file as well as found in your Chapter 10 Exercise folder. And the example here is just a simple cylinder as you see here, I have a slit in here, so it's not going 360 degrees, otherwise, of course, we wouldn't be able to unfold that. Now, a very common problem, a very common problem that people experience here is they'll select the flat pattern immediately here. And, of course, it doesn't look like it created it as a flat. And we're also getting a warning, basically stating that Inventor does not know how to handle this. So I'm going to cancel a lot of that. I'm going to switch to an isometric view again. And the key here to unfold a rolled part is select the inside face. And now I'm going to select the flat pattern. Now Inventor is going to know what to do with that. So when I selected the flat tool, Inventor didn't have a flat face for it to work with here. So that's why I got the error in the first place here. But by selecting the inside face, Inventor knew exactly what to do with that and unfolded it correctly for me.